We all, I think we're on. Uh, <laughs> this is another Love Rub Billiard Weekly. It's been a while since I've presented, I must admit, I've been on with Jollies. Uh, and Dave's uh, been in the chair for the last couple of weeks. Uh, you're noticing Dave uh, is not here today. He's uh, on the other work commitments. He's left us in the lurch as Dave Parkinson. I'm joined by James Gordon, the editor of the Rubber League. Goal. Uh, you well, James? It's been another uh, frantic uh, seven days of Rubber League. Yeah. It's always. Well, yeah, there, there, there does seem to be a lot. Well, there does seem to be a lot happening, doesn't there? There's always stuff to be talking about. Um, and obviously if you want to comment on the video and let us know what you want us to talk about or if you've got any opinions or or anything like that that you want to um, throw in, please do leave them in the comments. Should we start with the good or the bad? Or the ugly? Or the ugly. We'll go with the ugly. Uh, you want to Everyone, everyone ugly. wants to go with the ugly. It's going to be uh, uh, the, the latest incident at, at Wigan Warriors, hasn't it? Talima Totai has been convicted of... Uh, Drink driving, uh, I think he was almost double the uh, drink driving limit. Um, he's been uh, suspended from driving for 18 months. Uh, your, your thoughts on that, James? It's obviously the, the third player at Wigan in the last eight months to. Uh, well, I think I said. I think, I think I remember. Um, I remember putting a tweet out a bit ago um, saying about how Wigan have, obviously, since they've won the grand final. They've had all these various things happen, haven't they? Where you know, obviously, you've had players left. You had Sean Wayne leave. Um, you obviously had the Zach Hardacre thing. Um, they had ha- Hamlin, obviously, as well. You've got the whole Sean Edwards saga. Um, there's all these things that keep happening to Wigan that you you maybe wouldn't necessarily associate. Well, not necessarily wouldn't associate with Wigan, but things that surprise you from one of the top clubs in the game, and um, you know, it has to be a concern. And I think. It, this has happened we're going to sort of I'm not saying they've got out of the woods or anything but they've had a quiet few weeks in terms of you know they've started picking up a few wins yeah they're not playing particularly well but they've been scraping a few wins and you know trying to move up up the table a little bit and um, and obviously now this has happened and uh, being interesting I know there's, there's talk of maybe being deported or uh, something like that and um, I did see it I seen a few comments on Twitter last night which was interesting about how um Clearly, what we're gonna do and isn't putting them off, putting players off from doing it. But then, my immediate reaction to that was, well, if you look at Zach Hardacre, for instance, you know he's done whatever he's done, but yeah, he's still the starting fullback every week. So, you know, is it a bit of a case of you know, and, and no, this isn't meant as a sort of a, as a personal attack at Hardacre or anything. But do you reap what you sow in that regard? If you're gonna be Forgiving, well, not forgiving players, but you know what I mean. There's obviously a, a, a cult. There's obviously they're happy to give players a second chance, and maybe that's you know put certain players, you know, put them under a false sense of security. Maybe. Yeah, because it, it, there is a lot of speculation going on at the moment, thinking that Totai will be um, released by Wigan. He's still got next year on, on his on his contract at Wigan as well so it only expires at the end of uh, the 2020 season I think uh, so we've still got another another year left on his contract obviously he's been linked away with moving from the club anyway before this drunk driving charge but if, if Wigan do get rid of him is it isn't it looking like a little bit of controversy because of obviously giving Zach Hardacre the second chance and, and giving the likes of obviously the youngster Craig Moore a second chance and not giving to leave the toe tags well it, it, it's slightly different with overseas players isn't it because you don't know how it's going to impact on his visa and, and stuff like that it may it may be taken out of Wigan's hands you know if, if he gets deported there's nothing Wigan can can do about that um, Wigan are certainly in an interesting an interesting place aren't they because they've lost quite a few players there's obviously a bit of speculation about George Williams and you know I know last week they had that rook of new contracts and you know with Sanjay Bibby and um, you know, clearly they're in a bit of a you know transitions being used quite a lot with Wigan and Leeds, but it's like they've got to they've got to try and rebuild the team somehow, and um, you know they're still not announced what's happening with the coach. Um, you just sort of feel like someone needs to get a grip of what's going on, and um, 
you know, and, and take it forward, whatever that, what that might look like. I listened to BBC uh, Five Lives Rugby League podcast earlier on this week, and it's actually based on manager, managers slash coaches. What what is the difference between managers and coaches? And this is well timed. This 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 was brought out by Dave Woods at the BBC on Monday or Tuesday, I believe. So it happened before the Toulouse Tota incident even broke, and the and the story even broke out. But it, it's it's a case of well well when Sean Way was at Wigan would this have happened because he was a brilliant man manager wasn't he? Uh, we don't really see that with Adrian Landrush yet, do we? Is it? I, but it, but then again, on the flip side, the coaches and managers can't hold the players' hands twenty four seven, can they? I think I mean it's an interesting one because obviously in rugby league we refer to them as coaches, and obviously in football, and I mean a lot of other sports are the same. Whereas in football, it's always the manager, isn't it? And I always you know what is that just a is that just a, a culture thing or, or is there something a bit more to that? You know, you look at you know, looking at a football example, so Ferguson was always regarded as a as a very good man manager and, and you know, maybe you know, we in all this age of player welfare and mm. you know, all that palaver, it's like, well, for me, if you're the coach of the team, you should be responsible for your players. You know, that's it. So it's like you, you know, you're managing them as your player but you know you're right in what you say there's only so much you know if, if you go out and, and mm. get smashed tonight and yeah. get arrested tonight does that mean is that my responsibility because that's outside work you know what I mean and it's like well I think while the professional sportsmen you know it's a different sort of thing and they've obviously got to sacrifice a lot to be where they are um, y- you think you feel like yeah they've got to take some responsibility but then I suppose it would be remiss of you not to link some of these incidents together and question a culture or question a, you know, I think Warrington had it years and years ago. Warrington had this mm. a, a very negative culture around drinking and, and whatever else. And, um, you know, that was before they had that period of success that they had. And it's like, you know. Uh, and then Tony Smith, who's, a, who's also a good manager or coach, whichever way you look at it, he came in and changed that at Warrington, didn't he? And he changed that culture. Is it all about the, the person? Involved the person leading the club because Sean, when we all, we all know, he was very, very proud on culture, wasn't he? And he was very proud on bringing Wigan players through and, and academy products, and the culture seemed perfect at the club. As that, do you think it's just shined away a little bit at Wigan? I think. I mean, I think. Or do you think it's just changed? And because, I, because Lamb's much younger than Wayne, isn't he? So does he still? I think when you spoke, whenever you spoke to Sean, the players, whenever you spoke spoke to Sean Wayne, he was very. They were his kids, weren't they? He like treated mm. the players like they were his kids, yeah. and you know he, he brought them all through, and and he was almost like a father figure to them, and, and you know in many ways, he is the the coach is the the head coach is the pinnacle if you like. So they've got all these assistant coaches, so it's like well if the head coach is just coaching it, and why do you need the assistant coaches? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So I think I, the the problem you always have with issues is when it affects your best players. So, like, Hardacre being a prime example, you know, Randy Chase is another example. It's harder to replace a Zach Hardacre or, you know, look at Casford. Casford released Hardacre. They mm-hmm. could have kept him. But what would that have done to the rest of their team? And now we're going to sort of, we're going to have taken a punt on signing him in the first place. He's misdemeanored while he's been at Wigan. And I'm not saying that other players are thinking, oh, well, we can get away with it now. But, you know, maybe it just plants the seed at the back of their mind that, you know, if I'm playing well or if I'm good enough, I can get away with with doing whatever. Yeah, and, and you mentioned Gabe Hamlin before. We're still actually waiting to find out the, the results of his case. We, under, we understand he is back home in Australia. It doesn't look likely that he'll be returning uh, to the club anytime soon. Uh, so, Tully Totai won't be um, picked and, and selected by Adrian Lamb for, for the foreseeable future while the club carries out an, an internal investigation uh, so we'll move on from that now James uh, we've got a comment uh, from Michael Scott saying what, what about Sean Long going to, to Rugby Union, it was announced earlier on in the week that Sean Long was, was going to be switching codes and going to Harley Quinn's at Rugby Union uh, we, we think it's going to be in a, as, a, as a skills coach on the attacking side of things for, for Harley Quinn's I'm going to say I I this is a strange one for me because I just I, I struggle to see how you go from rugby league to, to rugby union having not 
played rugby union. I, I know he's played a little bit for Oral Rugby Union. He played uh, Preston Grasshoppers in, well, the, in the last couple of months and so, and so on. But he's, he's not played it to a professional level, has he? What, what, what I think. I mean, there's a lot of there's a lot of ex rugby league players in rugby union. I think mm-hmm. just because you've not necessarily. I think they have a lot more specialist coaches, don't they, in rugby union? And it's like ultimately, whether it's rugby league or rugby union, kicking, passing, you know, running a set place, you know, you still ultimately you're still running onto a ball you know if he's as long as he's not getting you know he won't be getting involved with coaching at the rook or the mall or whatever so you know i i don't think that's necessarily the issue i think i think the thing that i think about relating to it is more that you're looking at the number of players that you know paul deacon went over didn't he john clark left warrington gone to england there's a lot of former rugby league players who've played at the very top who are going over to rugby union because ultimately that's where the money is there's more opportunity is that not more of a concern that you know Sean Long's thought well instead of staying at St Helens I want to go over to to Harlequin's rugby union uh, I well, don't, I don't... talks was it a fair play to, to Sean Long uh, because he probably would have got a substantial pay rise for, from, from Harlequin's to what he was getting at, at Saints and you, and you can't begrudge anyone of that I just thought it was a little bit strange how, how he's um he made that sudden switch and maybe not at the end of the season as well. Yeah, uh, I, I would imagine that St. Helens are probably a bit disappointed, but then at the same time, the rugby union season's mm-hmm. out of season, isn't it? So it's like, well, you know, it's a bit like chicken or the egg, I, I guess. It's like, if, if you if Harlequins were recruiting him in the middle of the yeah. season, you know, it's the same with Luther Burrell, isn't it? I mean, he's coming in mid season because that was when he was out of contract ultimately. Um, but yeah, I mean, Saints have moved quickly, haven't they? And got Richard yeah. Marshall, who's you know decent. And that's a that's a fantastic appointment, isn't it, at Richard Marshall? Because he did a very good job with Halifax on very very limited resources. And what I liked about Richard Marshall at Halifax, he he obviously implemented the reserve grade and he promoted from within at Halifax rather than getting maybe second or third grade Super League players that weren't quite playing first team anymore and brought into Halifax. He he promoted youngsters from the local area. Uh, all the way through uh, to the first team and he'll, he'll play a major part in that at Saints as well with the academy. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see what Saints do and whether, you know, is there an opportunity for him to eventually become the head coach? Because, you know, you always think with the Australian coaches that they're going to go back um, to the NRL at some point. So, obviously, Holbrook's, what, it's his third season. Um, how many more years is he going to be at Saints? And, and it's like, do you see Marshall yeah. potentially... You've got to think as well. Saints are flying this year. If, if if they win the double this year, he's won everything with Saints that he possibly can because well, he got the league leader's club challenge. Well, apart from the world club challenge, sorry, he won the league leader's shield last year. If they do the double this year, I'm not saying they will because it's a very hard task. But they're, they're certainly on course for it at the moment. If they win the challenge cup and the Super League grand final this year, he's won yeah, everything. I'm not, I'm not saying Justin Justin Albrook's going to to leave Saints, but I suppose it all depends what jobs come up. In the NRL, obviously, he'd it? it, fancy going back home, wouldn't he? Because he, he, he wouldn't be close to his family and everything. But he said he's keen to extend his, his Saints deal, so maybe maybe he's a, at the Tulsa Week he's staying here for an extra year or two. But then Richard Marshall, he, I, I think he's certainly capable of, of a Super League job. Well, it's, it's similar to the Warrant situation, is it, where they got Andrew Henderson. Um, I suppose it depends on whether it goes Ori or not. You know, if Saints are still, you know, if, if Holbrook leaves on his own accord and Saints are still doing well mm. then it, you know it's a natural succession thing whereas I think sometimes it falls over when you know you, you sack your coach because they're underperforming and you can't then step up the assistant so um, interesting what happens anyway um, Castleford as well announced the signing of Tyler Heppy from Toulouse Olympic earlier uh, on this week uh, a very shrewd signing for the Tigers do you, do you feel? I mean I think I don't think, I don't think Casford Casford haven't made a lot of headline signings because that's not. That's not Casford. That's is not, it? Yeah, I mean, you seem to sign up a, a lot of project players. Don't yeah, Casford. I think Wakefield are quite similar. He's obviously, you know, they don't they don't go out there and you know you could say Chase Blair was a, you know, was one of those players. Mm-hmm. But you look at the players that Casford have got is when before they came to Casford, you wouldn't have necessarily fancied these players that much but obviously the quality of the calibre of coach that they've got in Darrell Pavel manages to step them up to another level and you know obviously you trust his judgement and he's seen something in Heppy that he thinks that can fit into their style of play and that he can develop to take forward and you know it's a really interesting time for Casford because they've had this run of 
four or five years now where they've been up there or thereabouts and it's like well he's going to have to refresh the squad a little bit um, you know to ensure that they can stay up at that end of the table and um, you know they've, they've missed Luke Gale this year and you know obviously there's talk about him maybe leaving and so it'd be interesting to see Casper's going to be an interesting one to watch over the next few years yeah I, I, I would agree I think uh, Tar Heppi though is, is a very good very good player in the championship uh, we've got a comment from Scott Johnson saying we're proud I'm guessing he's a Wigan fan we pride ourselves on, on rugby league being a family game people who bring it down it shouldn't be in it full stop uh, I wouldn't go that far possibly but uh, Tautai has been found guilty of drink driving uh, when he was at the Parramatta Eels uh, in the NRL uh, I believe um, so he certainly should be on his final chance this time uh, maybe they should implement three strikes and you're out who knows um, <laughs> but uh, Hardaker could be gone then wouldn't it? well yeah <laughs> we can't afford to lose that can we uh, Derek Paulmont has come out with uh, some controversial comments as well this week James he's hit out to uh, Halifax coach Simon Griggs Simon Griggs um, went along the lines of saying that the 18 night because Halifax are of course in the Charles Cup semi-final where they've drawn Saints um, he said the 1895 Cup uh, is a little bit of a Mickey Mouse competition he's hinting at and uh, he's not happy about his part time team uh, having to play two games a week on consecutive weeks um, Derek Moore wants to get out to that and said it's insulting to the sport yeah I think I mean the, I'm I don't see why people have to be so negative about it I think yeah okay it's not been perfect this season the way it's been organised but it's another competition it's another trophy, you know, why do you play sport, you know, what's the point in Halifax playing if, if they're not interested in, you know, do they, they want to win, they want to win trophies without it being difficult, yeah. they just want to rock up every Sunday and go through the motions and it's like, well, this is an extra piece of silverware that Halifax could feasibly win, um, you could play at Wembley, you know, it's like, you, you're basically saying to a Halifax player, a part-time player, right, if you play on two Wednesdays, you could play at Wembley. Oh no, I can't bother playing on a Wednesday. It's like, well, yeah. I mean, what's that all about? And I think but, it's but all about I, holding that opinion privately, yeah. but it's not a good look for rugby league. It's no, not a good I look agree. for respect sponsors. You know, I if agree. you talk, though, imagine a spot. I mean, I know Derek's company's got involved this year, but it's a final at Wembley. There's not many opportunities for a sponsor to sponsor something yeah. at Wembley. And it's like, next season, a sponsor could come along and chuck in X amount, and the prize money per player could be X amount. And I bet everyone's opinion would be different then, but. You can't just get that from really? the off. You've got to work that. You've got to work to that. So I just think sometimes I think we'll believe just shoot yourself in foot. You know, a lot of people but, moaning but, about it. And yeah, I, I do understand though that the eighteen ninety four, uh, eighteen ninety five cup games aren't included in the players' contract. So the players effectively play them games for. Free. Well, I'm not sure how that works because. And the, and the, if they're on contract they, it for the championship games but, but how does that work and you get paid per map sale or what I'm not sure I'm not sure but I, I, I just think you know yeah okay it's it been poorly play. planned but all the clubs have been privy to this the clubs all voted it in uh, uh, what well, I don't I don't get I see Bradford are a, are a club that, that aren't really happy about playing the midweek games and they, they said that, but they've got uh, a reserve the, team and it's yeah. just like we'll just put the reserve but, team but, out but, but they're saying um Stuff like it's it's too too many games for the players that the, the part time players are obviously in work and so on and they're playing too many games. Hold on a minute. At least this is a relevant competition uh, for to to reach Wembley, didn't they? Play a, around six or seven games pre season for the Yorkshire Cup. Well, the other thing as well, they're getting paid. They're getting paid. They're getting paid to play. If you don't like it, go and play amateur rugby league. Mm, you know, they, they, uh, ultimately. The, these clubs, the players that play for these part-time clubs are getting paid to play for them. How do they think the clubs get the money for them to play? It's by having people come through the turnstiles. It's by having trying to develop the game, trying to develop the competition. You know, if if the eight night pack up there and the players don't want to play in it, well, go and play, go and play for Thatto Heath or or whatever. That's my. I think we've got to stop. Rugby league's got to stop trying to satisfy everybody. Mm. It's got to look at the bigger picture and think, right? You know, I, you know. Obviously, I do a lot of work in football, and there's a lot. You have some of this at non-league level where teams getting promoted, and all of a sudden the travelling becomes an issue. It's, like, it's, it's big boys football, is what they say. 
big boys football. If you don't like it, well, go and play at a low division. Mm. And I think that's, I honestly think that's where we believe got to a point now where you know you have all this crowing and crying about funding and stuff. Well, if you can't afford to be in the championship, don't be in it. Simple mm. as that. Yeah, it's certainly interesting. I, I like the eighty nine five cup and I like what it brings because obviously it does give uh, players a chance who probably who might never get to play at Wembley in the Challenge Cup final. Let's be realistic. But it's a, it, to, to why, why do, you know you play sport to win? At the moment, the championship teams can feasibly only win one trophy, and that's the championship. You've had the situation where Toronto are in it, so Toronto are probably going to win it this year. Without that competition, what would Batley have won over the last however many years? And it's like having these extra competitions where because the championship is quite competitive and everyone can beat anyone on the day sort of thing you only need a bit of a run and you can get to the final you know play at Wembley yeah no everyone's been moaning about it after but let's have a bit of a reality check here mm. the North Carolina Cup finals wouldn't get 10,000 they might get 89,000 at Blackpool now all of a sudden it's at Wembley Stadium could you imagine forget the Challenge Cup finals on there's no way you'd be able to get that final on at Wembley. The championship clubs or, or whoever should be grateful that they can play at Wembley because it would never happen. So, okay, yeah, it'd be better if it was before the Challenge Cup final. But it isn't. It's after. He's still at Wembley. D- Derek Bourbon, in his, in his response to Simon Briggs, did you read it all? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> eventually. Yeah, it was a couple of Persian <laughs> words, but... Um, he loves a good state in Billy Derek Bowman. He does. He does uh, <laughs> I think my half my email inbox capacity is uh, least. What, what, what he did point out, I was one of them who, who, who was mourning about it being after the Challenge Cup final. But but what Derek rightly so pointed out in his in his uh, response to Simon Griggs was that uh, if, if the, the 1895 Cup final was before the Challenge Cup final, a lot of the, the Challenge Cup final fans will still be in the pubs and in and around Wembley, still maybe on the coaches with one eye on the BBC, not really watching the game. Whereas once the Challenge Cup final has been played, they might actually be willing to just remain in that yeah, in the yeah. seat for another round. It all depends on travel, doesn't it, I suppose. And, uh, and the other thing is, is, is they going to have the Challenge Cup travel. celebrations on the pitch? Because is there going to be a lot of confetti and stuff on the pitch? Yeah, start the yeah, or is someone going to go around with like a Hoover or something before it? Oh, uh, what do they do it? In a challenge, oh, they, they're they not on the pitch, the pitch yeah. so, but, but they, they can always they might be able to walk up the famous Wembley steps and uh, lift it. Yeah, yeah. No, that, that's what Castellan's Dragons did last year. Yeah, they but they still have some on the pitch as well, don't they? Maybe, yeah. they'll just, maybe they'll just fire off that pitch thing. Yeah, who knows? And obviously, the Stephen Mullaney uh, final is played as and well. And what are they going to do about the pitch? Because surely Coral will be all over the pitch. You know yeah. what I mean? So they're getting a little bit of free advertising at the 8 9 right. yeah. Cup. Yeah. Or is Derek going to come on with like an AB Sundex sign? Yeah, but, but or, or they might be decking in the in goal areas. Yeah, that's good idea. <laughs> like they have in the NRL, they could, just, they could just have the in goal area as decking, couldn't they? All yeah. the way along. Like they have in the NRL, which I don't like, where they have the black or whatever it was. Yeah. State of Origin last week. We, we also got to speak about uh, racist remarks, uh, James. I think it was last Saturday this this broke out this story so obviously just after we recorded uh, the rugby league weekly last week Jose Kenga the Swinton Wines uh, forward uh, came out on Twitter and uh, it said that it's wrong but especially in this day and age it's, it's disgusting isn't it yeah I think um, you know obviously it's a difficult topic but yeah it's been disappointing to see people sort of trying to justify it and trying to defend defend it I think the bottom line is he said it mm. the player was offended by it that's it that's it. that's how black and white it is it's like you know it was an offensive comment whether you know whatever excuse or whatever you want to give it and he's apologized for it and resigned and done all those things but i was very disappointed to see a lot of people defending it because you know oh, because he's a nice guy or because he's got a load of money and he's put loads of money that that all that stuff's irrelevant he said that one comment Okay, it might be out of character. That's not, that's not the point. He said the comment, it was out of order. And what's happened, happened. I think there's a wider issue with Toronto at the moment where things seem to be, you know, there's, there's a few incidents happening with Toronto at the moment which are a bit unsavoury, aren't they? So, like, you've got the visa issues, you know, Renny Metautia came out, um, came out last week and said they've got problems where players are on holiday visas in the UK. 
there's all this, you know. But I, I there's think, obviously something going on there because I, I actually thought Rene Matoiti was still at Toronto in the player welfare yeah, and there's, uh, position. There's, there's, the, 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 you know, and I've seen the, I've seen people take offence to this, and I think John Davidson put it in, in one of his pieces. Is Toronto Wolfpack are effectively a, a UK club with a Canada name on it. Basically, that's yeah. it. You know, they're not. They they pretty much live over here. You know the players live over here, and they just travel over to Toronto for a few games here and there. You know they're registered under. You know there's, there's but but I, there's just a lot of grey areas, isn't there? And I think ultimately, it's at a very interesting point now where some of these logistical issues that you know I think would have been well, they were obvious to me in terms of well, there's a reason why there's not transatlantic teams in other sports because it is difficult to manage. Um, you know, you you worry now is Argyle going to be alienated by the fact that this has happened? We're how still, is that? Gonna, how is how is what Argyle's done going to impact on potential still, broadcasters, yeah. sponsors, whatever? We still we still reckon all that David Argyle's behind it financially. Well, yeah, I mean, but but he might get bored. You know, if, if he could turn around tomorrow and say, "I've had enough," what happens then? He just disappears. Yeah. But then I think the other thing now you've got to re- you've got to think. Well, a sponsor's going to be put off by this happening um, you know I, 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 like I say I still I still remain unconvinced that the Toronto thing's going to work it's, you know there's a lot of talk brewing at the moment about are they going to go up in Super League or not are Super League going to have them um, is there an opportunity for maybe Toronto to stay in the championship and maybe try and build that up as a I don't know as a bigger bigger competition and you know seek its own TV deal and, and what not well, there's whispers going around that the championship is in for a name change and it could turn into the the Premiership when the new TV deal comes into place in 2021 or the Premier League or something like that and then the league will effectively, effectively become the championship because obviously the Super League I, I don't, and the I, I, can completely break away. I don't get the, the whole championship thing. It makes no sense to me. I just think you have a... What your top league is Super League, Premier League, Elite League, whatever you want to call it, and then the division below that's Division One, Division Two, Division Three. Yeah. I, I think my I you know there's a mil- everyone's got an opinion on this. I think the overseas teams should be in Super League. I think there should be a franchise competition that they're in, and then I just have British Rugby League Division One, British Rugby League Premier League, whatever British Rugby League Division One, British Rugby League Division Two, just do it like that. You know, in an ideal world, I suppose you'd have. French Division One, North American Division One, and all that feeded into the to the top, but no one seems to have a clue what's going on. So I mean, they're just you know just uh, pie in the sky. Isn't it? And the, the Featherston Sherman, uh, Mark Campbell is also supportive of, of the comments made by Derek Beaumont and, and the witness coach as well, Kieran. Furt. Yeah, I mean, Pertle's been pretty open that he wants to win it. Obviously, witness are in a bit of a peculiar situation in that they can't compete to be promoted really because of the deduction and. And whatever, so ultimately winning that competition is is all they've really got to play for now. So, uh, Warrington sent Times Cup final witness Lee uh, eighteen ninety five Cup final. Uh, do you reckon all all the silver work win this side at Penines? Yeah, but and then Saints Saints uh, Saints Warrington grand final. Yeah. Well, we 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 do fancy Lee to uh we do fancy yeah. Lee to cause some problems in championship. Yeah. Well, I I think. They could make a cut. We've, we've, we, said, we, we, we've we, seen that they've signed Jordan Thompson this week from we from think, home. Yeah, we do uh, very good signing. Could they sign a couple more before we, the end of the season? Could they have a push? We do could fancy, they not we do fancy approach? Yeah, we do fancy a bit late, I think. But I, I think the, the, the championship thing, we need to get this call off right, actually. We need to figure out where the championship grand final is going to be. Yeah. Because is it going to be at the home of the. effectively at Toronto? Mm. I mean. Not that that necessarily matters because you know it didn't happen. Well, it might it might not be a Lee even if it, if, if Lee get there because obviously the the eighteen ninety five cup quarter final ties. Yeah, well, they're receiving the pitch. Receiving the pitch, aren't they? They yeah, won't be doing that in September. Manchester women also and the uh, reserves United reserves. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, that's really anyway, it's a long way off. We need to figure that out. I'd rather that it was at Warrington or whatever. You know. Yeah. Um, neutral ground. Fred Parkinson says part time players do get contract money but also winning and losing pair. Uh, they also get winning bonuses that accumulate over how many wins um, in a row they get. For so I don't see why. But I've, I've, I've heard that, that players are not are not paid for the 1895 Cup games. But that might not happen. But if they're on contract, they're on contract, you know what I mean? If they got to the Science Cup final, they'd be playing, wouldn't they? Mm. 
Interesting. I just think, I just think, I think, I think, I think rugby league generally is a bit of a reality check. Uh, Adam Bates has said, uh, interested to know your thoughts on bringing more rugby league uh, to Nottinghamshire. I think he's he's seen the Twitter talk that uh, I did this morning. We we obviously ran the poll uh, earlier on in the week saying where should Magic Weekend uh, be held in 2020. A lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of different comments coming through. Some wanting to take it uh, to Dublin, some to. Um, Nottingham, some to London, some to Toronto, some to uh, Barcelona. I wouldn't mind going Barcelona again. Um, yeah. So some wanted to to go back to the Manchester uh, City Stadium in the, in the Etihad. Some wanted to keep it at Anfield. Uh, you had shouts of Glasgow coming in. Uh, well, where would you away. have it like, at City Ground at Forest? You'd probably have it at the City Ground, wouldn't you? I've been a couple of times. We're, we're an athletic fan, unfortunately. Uh, so I've, I've been there I, I a mean, few the, times. Think, great. the thing with not, I think, I think the thing with Nottingham is obviously you've got Nottingham Outlaws, and we get a lot of communication from them. And you know, obviously, I think, I think they've got their own. They took over their own ground, haven't they, Nottingham mm. Outlaws? And they play in National Conference League, um, Division Three, whatever it is. And you know, I think. You look at what we what what the purpose of Magic Weekend is. It'd be nice if you could have a club like Nottingham build off the back of that a bit, like sort of Newcastle have in a way, because um, we haven't seen that. And I think ultimately, if you're going to do it, you want there to be a bit of tan. You know, how can you measure success? Mm. It, it'd be great if you you know if if you had Nottingham went into League One and then you know, a bit like Coventry is another example. Whether you whether you could yeah. get a deal to play at Coventry Ground is another another question, but um, yeah, I I'm not a massive fan of Magic Weekend anyway. I just get rid of it, but that's just me. Yeah, I get rid of it as well. I just uh, have like because if, 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 if you took say Wigan Warrington to the City Ground, yeah, but yeah, Morris, this is what I was going to say. But I mean? I'm not a fan of Ma- Magic Weekend to be fair, and I would scrap it. But if it was to stay, and I was to pick a preferred destination, it'd be somewhere. Closer to the islands than, than what we're, we've had in but the But not as close as Liverpool. To, in, in, rega- in regards to like what, 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 if you, what if you went to Nottingham, right, and you had Wigan, I don't know, Wigan Saints. Um, That's what I mean. Wigan, Wigan if, Saints. If you went and, back to the Dowdy, it's the traditional well, Dowdy. No, no, but, but what I'm saying is, uh, why don't you, have, you could have a double header at the city ground and a double header at Notts County. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And, and get everyone in Nottingham, but have it split across two stadiums so that. It doesn't look empty because I think if you do, I think that's I don't like the Magic Weekend because I just think the stadium looks empty all day. Whereas if you have a double header or even a one-off match, you know, like you said, like you said before, you, you could you could get championship involved. You could say right, well we'll have Bradford, Halifax, and then Leeds, Catsford somewhere, and then or you have you know you could even do it so you have a Lancashire version and a Yorkshire yeah. version or something like that. This is this is what I put in my column of the week. I said, I said scrap Magic, but I've have more double headers. Because so I think the, the, I, I think imagine. Um, we're going to be Saints, uh, Warrington v Salford. Salford at Goodison Park. Yeah, you, you, you because could, I think the problem, you, you the problem, you've, the problem Park, you've got yeah. is that Catalan and London say they brought what fifty fans each to Magic mm. Weekend. So whoever they're playing, the stadium's going to be in a big stadium. Whereas you know, do you really need to? Do you really need them to be in it? Um, you know, could you do it another way? You could you could make the argument. Well, why don't you have a you you know Catalan could t- well a bit like the new camp, mm. a bit like the new camp game. You know Catalan's magic weekend if you like could be them playing someone at the new camp, and just do it like that instead of having. You could do them all on one weekend if you, you wanted. Spaniards Yeah, you, you know you or, could do, or You know you could have you could could you could you do it where you have a weekend a rugby league's big weekend away or something and have a game Friday Saturday Sunday Monday where you know Friday could be. Warrington Saints Anfield Saturday could be Catalan someone at the new camp Sunday could be Lee could be Hull Hull KR at Grimsby or something you know what I mean <laughs> some kind you know you've, you've thought and, uh, you know Wigan, Wigan Leeds at Coventry or something I don't know do you know what I mean yeah. I, 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 magic magic's run for me now yeah uh, it's certainly I like, but, I like but, rugby league but, what but I, I don't want to be sat on a plastic seat watching three games back to back you want to be sat in the leather seat, don't you? James? You want to be up in the box having a prom bus seat. Well, it's not even that. I mean, like, like I say, I mean, obviously, I'm privileged enough that we can go in the press box, and it's a very nice press box at Anfield. But I was still, I was still a bit getting a bit fed up. Come 
Ah, Sam Warwick Saints, you know what I mean? You, you, you can't really, you can't, I don't know about you, but I can't focus for that long for, for six is, hours. Just yeah, it is, it, is a bit, it is a bit tiring. It, 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 well, not tiring, but yeah, it gets a bit, it's a bit same, you know? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, and it doesn't feel like an it doesn't feel like a big occasion. But then at the same time, I suppose you could argue that when we went to Barcelona, it almost felt like it was over too quick. It was yeah. an occasion that was over yeah. a bit too quick. It's a, um, uh, it's a, it's a, it's like the the better the occasion is, and and the more you hype up just one game, the quicker it goes. Obviously, mm. we're not we're not comparing it in the slightest. But we watched State of Origin last week, yeah, and yeah, how yeah. quick did that that first yeah. half go? It, it it seemed like it was ten minutes and. And that was the first half done and dusted. And I just think if, if you can hype up one game more and put them out on separate weekends, I think that'll get more traction and gain pu- more publicity rather than... Because everyone will just publicise the the Wigan Warrington game and then publicise the Leeds. Yeah, you've got, I mean, yeah, I think... You know I mean? think Instead of doing all six games. I think I another think. issue is, obviously, the, the clubs aren't... Uh, do the clubs hide a little bit behind the fact that there's, there's all 12 of them there? So they don't promote it as much. Whereas if you maybe got them to take make a sacrifice and say, right, well, you've got to play one game on the road, Warrington. Say you've got to make sure you promote the hilt out of this, you know, and, and see it as a commercial opportunity rather than as a as a wider, um, you know, as a, a wider commercial opportunity for an individual club rather than the league as a whole. Yeah, um, John Robinson says scrap magic. Um question mark <laughs> we had 64,000 at St James's Park and then over 4,000 on the Friday night for Newcastle Thunder versus Bradford it's been a huge success in Newcastle but it, 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 it wasn't it wasn't 64,000 because, 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 because the last you're coming two, the same 32,000 people on both days yes but the, the attendance has actually declined in the last two years it was at Newcastle so it's like it goes to one location does all okay, care but then because people have already been there once a lot, a lot of people just won't go again because they've already I been think, there. I think three times yeah, is more than enough. I think, it, it, you, it, I think, fair, I think you should have quit at three times. But, uh, but then again, it, it has been a success when, for, well, for, for the, the Newcastle Thunder, Friday Night Lights, what they put on because obviously they get a couple more thousand than. than but but, 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 like, but if, you've got, if you've got 30,000 rugby league fans going anywhere and there's a rugby league game on, the chances are you're going to be able to get them to go to it. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And it's like, well, it's like scholars do the same, don't they, on Challenge Cup. And so and people and are travelling there. Well, yeah, it's it's like if if um, the Magic Weekend does go to to Nottingham, then Nottingham Outlaws could do a similar yeah, if they wanted to, yeah, similar yeah. thing and have a Friday night. But, but I don't think that necessarily means that it's a great success. I think that's just that's just one of the consequences of having it. But if you had a, it, you know, if you got rid of Magic Weekend and you had a one-off game in Newcastle. Or wherever on Saturday, there's no reason why you couldn't do, you know, you couldn't do that the night before or whatever. Anyway, I, th- I think New- I think Newcastle. You could you could you could take Saints Wigan to Newcastle and have Newcastle playing before it. Mm. Because is there any value to Newcastle? You know, well, that means if, Newcastle if, play if, if Newcastle Thunder that. get four thousand on Friday night, and they're all tourists, what value is that to Newcastle Thunder? I don't think it. It's not really. There's not. There's no value to that because, oh yeah, you can get four thousand once a year, full of Saints and Wigan fans. But that's not growing Newcastle Thunder as a club, because they need local fans because that's how sport works. Do you see what I mean? It's like well, Jordan also says not and not to forgetting to mention there's over not oh, there's no over one thousand three hundred players playing the sports in the northeast. Participation growth forty percent up in the last four years. But that is pretty good to be fair. Yeah, but I think I I think that might be doing a disservice to Newcastle Thunder, to to the club, yeah. to Cramlington Rockets, people like that who are doing a lot of work that could be done with or without Magic yeah. Weekend. Yeah, uh, I think I think Thunder are doing great things to be fair, especially Lon- London. London way. haven't had Magic Weekend, but they still producing yeah. players, yeah. developing players, and participation and all that. Uh, Adam, Adam also said on Bates says the East Midlands uh, definitely requires some sort of injection in terms of cash. Uh, the game is growing in this region uh, with no interest or support. Well, we we say that what we like about Coventry is the organic growth, growth, yeah. isn't it? Because it's like you know, you know, harking back to Toronto again. Is there any value in clubs just chucking silly money at? 
Lancashire, Yorkshire, Australian players there is it, in my opinion. You're just overpaying for those players. Whereas, you know, like we're seeing with London now, where there's a lot more London based players in Super League now. If Coventry can do that, and as soon as they start getting one or two players coming up through Coventry, then start playing in Super League, that's going to help them, you know, that's going to help them grow. And I think that's, I'd like to see projects like Coventry given a little bit more support to keep doing that because ultimately, Someone's got to be generating these players. Yeah, and, and Alan Robinson as well, the, the commentary owner, he's, he's done it all on his own yeah. here enough, hasn't he? He started with nothing uh, and, and, and he built got, this got to give, do something uh, pretty substantial and special. And you've got to give them the platform to be able to do that. And I think at the moment, um, you know, like I say, you've got, you've got part-time players in championship earning a decent coin, moaning and they have to play on a Wednesday night. Yet you've got players in Coventry who are probably losing more weeks than... Than the not yeah. having to travel hundreds of miles every weekend just to play a game, and you've got you've got Halifax players moaning because they have to go to Keith on a Wednesday night. Do you know what I mean? It's just like you've got to have a sense, there's got to be a little bit of reality check here. Do you know what I mean? And uh, we'll move on onto some transfer speculation. Uh, Wakefield believed to uh, have signed Joyce West and Rumble. Decent signing. Do you feel? I always think it's a strange one with Westerman because he always seems a lot older than what he actually is. I think I checked the other day; he's only twenty nine. I'm surprised that I'm surprised that he's decided to leave Hull because I just think, obviously, yeah, he started at Cass, he had a good spell at Hull, went to Warrington, Toronto, whatever. Was it time for him to sort of settle down and just get his head down a little bit? And obviously, now he's going over to Wakefield, as we're led to believe. And, He's got a sort of start again, and uh, not start again, but you know what I mean. But you know, Wakefield's a decent project to be involved with. Um, he's a big, he's a big forward, isn't he? Chris Chester likes big forwards. Yeah, you can imagine. You know, he he's going to play thirteen. You'd imagine for for Wakefield and probably do very well there. Yeah, um, Jamie Ellis didn't link with a move to Salford Red Devils as well. Well, have Salford got any money? Well, they will. They will have Jackson Hastings goals. Well, we'll see. We we think that Rob Lewis will end up staying at, at Salford or don't we now? With it, uh, he's, he's he's quite settled with his family in Salford. You just wonder how long Salford. Know, you wonder how long Salford can keep going as they are. Do you know what I mean? Because things aren't getting any better for them, and it's like at what point does it does it fall over? Especially now, you know there seems to be there's this theory. Well, there's this thing next season where they're bringing back reserve grade, but only for clubs that have got an academy, and it's like well. It's also going to be left behind because all the teams that they're competing against, they're going to have academies and reserve teams, and Salford aren't going to have anything. Mm. Um, and ultimately, they can't invest without the support, and they they just seem to they just seem to be stagnating a little bit. Salford, and they're not they weren't in a good place to start with. Um, you know whether <laughs> I don't know. I hate, obviously, they're going to have it. You know the the beauty, if you like, of Super League is you get your salary cap paid for by Sky, so. You can get away with that, but that's only going to happen for another season. Mm. It's going to be interesting. What the, the TV level is coming up in twenty twenty one? What would your ideal TV, t your ideal TV deal be? Um, I've been thinking about this. I'm going to write. I'd, I'm going to write a story about it at some point. But I'd like to. You don't see like over different broadcasters. That's sort of like maybe one game a week to be on the BBC. So it's terrestrial mm. TV and it's. Well, BBC don't have any domestic sport. That's the thing. People don't, people always clamour about this, but but BBC don't show any domestic sport. They don't. They don't. They have. To, they, do they have the? They don't. Do they have the FA Cup anymore? And they have the Challenge Cup already. I think people people get lost in this myth that it's feasible to have BBC showing live games. It isn't. I don't think it is. They don't, they don't pay very much. Because they, well, they, don't, they, don't, they, don't, don't they don't pay. They don't have the. They don't have the desire to do it. They don't have the capability to do it. They've also got the the, the thing with the BBC as well is if they if they give rugby league it, every other sport's going to be knocking on the door and saying, "Well, hang on. Why can't you? Why have you not got the rugby union on or whatever?" Um, I I agree with what you're saying though. I think I think what probably needs to happen is they need to package it up a bit like football do and say, you know. X live games, mm. so you know football has seven only I think, and they have like so many Friday night. Let's say the group Friday night games, the group Saturday games, the group Sunday games, whatever. 
um, Challenge Cup, Championship. It all, it's all got to be split up a bit. It's got obviously they've got to do a lot better than last time because of the what happened with the Championship and how that all got rolled into that one deal and basically everyone got screwed over. Um, whether they'll be able to get a deal, uh, I I'm gonna write a piece on and ask the question: Does we really need a TV deal? Mm. Because I think the problem you've got is that clubs rely on it a bit too much. You know, mentioned Salford then. If you take Sol if you take Sky money off Salford, Salford just crumble. Mm. Now I'm not saying that they're the only club that would, but you know, Castleford have done pretty well recently. Is they're turning over six million, six, seven million pound. Only one point five, six, seven, eight million of that is coming from Sky. So that's only, you know, less than thirty percent of their turnover. Okay, yeah, you can argue that sponsorship and whatever comes because of the Sky coverage. But I think that Rugby League could do a lot worse than ask questions of their own businesses as clubs and say, right, you're on your own now. You know, there's enough Rugby League's got... I've, I've spoken to people in squash and in darts where they have their own subscription channels and the RFL have sort of been toying with this with the R-League thing. If you think, you know, we have 250,000 users on our site. If each of them paid £10 a month for a Rugby League channel, you know, that's £2.5 million a month which isn't too far off, well it might even be more than what Sky did over a year. And, because I think the other point is, that how long have we been talking about this broadcast deal now? We've been talking about it since 2017, haven't we, or oh, 2021. So we've been in this period of uncertainty for like two or three years. Say if Sky sign up for another four years, we're going to have to go through this again. Eh? We're always going to be looking... Mm. You know, you're always going to be looking at a bit further down the line. Whereas, if you take control of your own destiny, um, and I'm not saying do that exclusively. What I'm saying is, rugby league should maybe take responsibility for everything it's got, charge a subscription, say, to a rugby league channel. Now, you could still offer it to Sky. You could still say to Sky, right, look, I'd like to do with the darts. You know, if you want to take certain games or you want to take big events, fine, pay us for that. But I just think try and remove this reliance and the dependency um, on the TV money. Yeah, okay, every sport, you know, football is very dependent on TV money. But if they, I'm sure they would be able to adapt. You know, if if they lost that, and I think that that's sort of where I'm at. But yeah, I think the the whole package thing is. A, it'd be nice to say right. They've come up with five packages. X Super League live games, X Championship live games, Super League highlights, Championship highlights, whatever, and mm. do it that way. Maybe we can bid for one. Would you have the Championship on it? Yeah, I think. You, well, I mean, obviously it's gonna be different, isn't it? Because they're gonna be negotiated separately. You would imagine. But yeah, I, I, I think you've seriously got to go to someone and say, right, we've got a package here. It show one Championship live game a week and a highlight show. And say to whoever. Something needs to be done about the highlight show, don't, doesn't it? The Super League show, because I don't, I, I'm, I, I'm obviously a rugby league journalist, massive rugby league fan, and I don't, I, I hardly ever watch the Super League show just because of the time it's on. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But I, so honestly, I mean, I, so you um, can watch it on iPlayer and, and whatever, but you can, you can, but you just because because you've got to, you've got to uh, wait until and, and everyone's everyone's lazy. And I'm late. I'm well, late. You've got, when does it go on really iPlayer it. Tuesday? It goes on iPlayer yeah. Tuesday. So you're looking at, you're waiting until Tuesday to watch Thursday night's yeah. game on iPlayer. And it's like, well, you know, by that time, you're already thinking yeah. of next week. 100%. And I think, I think what Super League have to do is, uh, is certainly follow the NRL in terms of digital media coverage because the NRL are absolutely unbelievable, is it? Someone scores a try in the NRL. It's yeah, it's, it's, it's on think, Twitter within one minute. I, I, one minute. I think that's Twitter. a good. I think that's a good point you make. I think. So, so like the, these spectacular finishes we see from Tom Johnston and Tommy Makinson and Jane Natter last week. Who else? Yeah, whoever <laughs> else. But we, we we don't see them. People people are trapped from seeing yeah, them on I, on telly. What I would um, like to see until because, three or four days later when everything's faded out and you're looking ahead to the next game. The good thing about the NRL is everything's centralised, isn't it? So the clubs yeah. all have the same website and all that stuff. And it's like, can someone grab Super League and make because the RFL or, or Super League or whatever you want to call them, they seem to have that resource there. They're trying to do a website, yeah. they're trying to do content, they're trying to do video, but. It's a bit like, well, what's the point? Yeah, they try to do a bit of everything. They're doing it. They're doing stuff that we're doing, and obviously we're biased because obviously we, you know, we we're a bit like, well, if we're producing that stuff, 
why do they need to do it? Mm. What what they need to do is they need to do stuff that people like me and you can't do. And the stuff that people like me and you can't do is, like I said, clips the highlights because we don't have the rights to do it where the Super League and the AFL have got them rights. You know, I don't see the value in Super League or the AFL producing, you know, a England Watch article when that sort of stuff we do. Do you know what I mean? Whereas, obviously, the problem you've got is getting the buy-in from the clubs because you need to go, you need to get it all centralised, wouldn't you? And whether, you know, all the clubs have their own little deals and their own little shops and, you know, <laughs> but in my opinion... The, the only thing that needs to go on a club's website is ticket details. That's the main... Well, t- I mean, that's you, the know, you know, I, I brought this for You need the fixtures, the ticket details, the players, yeah, and, and obviously your shop if you want. You yeah. know, sell merchandise. But, but the point being is all 12 clubs could have the same website, it could be powered centrally, you know, the club's media guys can still feed into it and, you know, and still do their bit, but having this centralised platform would at least enable stuff like the highlights, because that's the key part, isn't it? That's that's what sells the game. You know, we always talk about how good rugby league is and, and whatever, and it's like, we don't show that often, off enough. Like, for, for, for example, like we, we, put a, we put the highlights up on our website on on a Monday lunchtime. And that's before the BBC's main It's a bit frustrating me really because why 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 can't we have it on even if it's on BBC two at ten o'clock on a Sunday. I think rugby league's problem is is it's too scared of forcing stuff on. To people, so I'd be saying, like the biggest thing with the BBC is that it's not, it's only up north, mm. you know, when it's first. And on. also, so, so, <laughs> this, and this, this, what, this is what riles me. People couldn't see the massive upset between people in the capital yeah, couldn't yeah. see the massive upset between Southern Broncos and Saint Helens on on Sunday until two days later when they're already it's previewing just, the next game. I, I, and I think that all stems to rugby leagues that scared of upsetting the apple cart because it's that dependent and it won't do it whereas I'd be like right we're going to have a highlight show yeah. you've got to show it by midnight on Sunday otherwise you're not having it uh, Fred says viewing figures on the BBC are always higher than the Sky ones which which seemingly is spreading the game more well you say that though but I mean there's be out, you know Challenge Cup games are on BBC is the game growing do you know what I mean I don't the thing is, is that you put you put any sport on BBC, it's going to get more figures. But that does that add up to anything? I'm not sure it does. I like players being interviewed after they've just scored a try. <laughs> Ian Jeffrey says, Ian TV pack, uh, any TV packages, merchandise, and tickets to see live games should be sold as a package. Uh, gold member would be a re- registered active amateur player. They get the best prize. Then you get the next level for people who volunteer at clubs and then a prize for the general public reward real engagement in the game. But I think that's that's tre- I, that's treasuring your own I think, I think the, I think Treasuring the converted, isn't it? Rather than reaching out to the wider audience. Well, I, I can sort of see where this is coming from, but at the same time, I think the problem you've got is on the one hand, the RFL are trying to do everything, aren't they? They're trying to grow the game, they're trying to commercialise the game, they're trying to whatever. But then... Everyone within that is all doing their own individual little things. The amateur game does their own thing. Wigan do their own thing. Leeds do their own thing. And it's like, well, you've got to decide what do you want to be. Do you want to be the governing body that does everything? Or do you just want to be at the top and just let everyone get on with it themselves? The problem, the problem you've got is are you going to get everyone to buy into it? I'd love for the... I think the championship clubs have got a massive opportunity to do this where they could show Super League how it's done and say, right, we're going to go in. We're going to have everything centralised. Because none of the championship clubs are really tied into anything. We'll centralise everything, we'll get a kit provider, we'll get a website done, we'll, we'll do everything centrally, we'll sell the highlights. I think that's a big opportunity. And you know, say to Super League, look, we think this is the way forward. The championship clubs have got less to lose, you know, because, you know, some may be... Well, they have more to lose. You know what I mean? But... <laughs> <laughs> but they've got less to lose. Um, they've got to lose. <laughs> <laughs> in terms of obviously Wigan and Leeds whoever might have more commercial deals in place and they might already have contracts on websites and all that for where the championship could start with a clean slate mm, interesting yeah because there are some championship clubs where you, you can't you can't get your way around the sites as well they, they need, they need and, the, and the other thing is, is some of the, champ- the championship clubs website. haven't got resource have they whereas if you did it centrally if you had the RFL's yeah. championship media man in the centre, he could 
he could do a piece with the Batley coach every week and make sure Batley or whatever have got some content going through it, whereas yeah. they don't have that at the moment. I, I, I do agree with you on that, on that point. And obviously and we are available like, for this. It's, <laughs> if you, any championship, <laughs> any, of the, any of the team at the RFL get in touch. Yeah. Um, but uh, it's, like, it's like yesterday, for example, on uh, Mon- uh, Wednesday, sorry, and Batley put this fantastic offer on uh, for Sunday's game against Sheffield. It's the Joe Cox. Uh, memorial game, they're opening the gates completely free entry to everyone. Uh, so hopefully, there's a good crowd at the Foxes Biscuit Stadium. But that was only a social post that, mm. that let you know there was nothing at all on the website. And I'm not. This is this is not having a dig at the Batley. Uh, any, anyone in the bat, Batley background, uh, background staff at, at the Bulldogs. This is not a dig whatsoever. I'm just saying if it if it's in a general thing that can go on straight away and. Not just Batley fans could know about it, everyone would know about it because that only went, went out to Batley's social media followers. Obviously, we ran a piece on site and a couple of other websites uh, ran a story on, on Batley doing free entry, so hopefully that'll give them a little bit of exposure and get a couple more running through the gates. Uh, but nothing was on the website. It, it was just one graphic in a social post. It's, it's so, some of the clubs have got websites, stuff like that they're, almost wor- they're almost worse off for having a website because they're yeah. that bad. Yeah. I, well, I was on one. I, I'm not going to name because it's it's unfair. But uh, what league? League, league one. Oh, no. um, I, I was on the website the other day. I, I just wanted to read the latest news from that club, and I couldn't find the news section yeah. at all. So I could see meet meet the team or whatever it is the the players in the squad. Um, I, I, could, I could sponsor him if I like, but I just didn't know the latest news at all. So I didn't know who they'd signed, I didn't know uh, who the recent games were against, I didn't know who they'd beaten recently, uh, and I couldn't find anything. Um, it's just stuff like that. If it was a general thing under the RFL or under a big uh, organisation that ran it centrally, uh, everything would go out there, it, it'll look slick, it'll look fresh. Uh, this is what this is what probably what we need uh, in the championship. Good idea, that Yeah, I might I might just do it. I might just do it. Anyway, we'll do an unofficial it's one and then and then uh, and then take it over. Unofficial that becomes official. Yeah. Hopefully, um, we're coming towards the end of the show. We'll just quickly have a look at this weekend's fixtures, James. Uh, tonight is the televised fixture. Thursdays are back on, uh, for for Super League on Sky Sports after just slating the TV deal completely. It's, uh, <laughs> it's Castleford taking on. Uh, we'll have to see uh, the jungle. Who you fancy? Oh, Menderhall's jungle. Hull of Jewel loss, aren't they? I think Hull of Jewel loss. Hull of Jewel loss, but oh, Castleford. They're not playing to the potential this I've year, are they? It. I've not done my media tips yet. Neither have I. I'm probably going to go for Castleford. I'll go Castleford just on the yeah. Yeah, and Hull of Jewel loss. <laughs> <laughs> uh, It'll probably be 46 0 or something. <laughs> Friday night team, sees two of the league's biggest teams, but two of the league's probably poorer teams this season, leads uh, at home to Wigan at the Emerald Headingley Stadium. This is very, very tough to call because uh, there's a little bit, little bit of disruption in the Warriors camp this week, obviously, mm. with the Tolima Toyota situation. Does that affect things a little bit? Leeds won last week, but Leeds the conditions. The conditions were, far, right? Yeah, the conditions were. You don't know how much that had an effect on it, and I, it is a tough one to call. I think. I think, I think Wigan by maybe 16 or something like that, but then again. Really? Yeah, yeah. But, but then again, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be surprised if Leeds won. Do you know what? It, it's just. The, the two teams are so inconsistent this season. We're, we're going to put 42 points past Catalans on, on an occasion at the DW this day in the league. Unstoppable. Uh, but we all know that they, they put in some dire performances as well this season. Uh, but I, I'll go with Wigan to, to beat Leeds. I'll go Leeds then. Alright, ah, okay. Uh, the other fixture on Friday night, uh, St. Helens at home, so Huddersfield. I think I know what the, yeah, the so tips will be for this St. week. St. are going to. Uh... They, would have they need a, to bounce Yeah, they would have had an absolute rocket fired up on this uh, <laughs> this week in training by Justin Albrook. Uh, it'd be interesting to see how, how they go on uh, on the field as well because obviously Richard Marshall will be there for his first game as an assistant coach of the Saints. But I'm going Saints, are you going Saints? Saints, yeah. Uh, and then on Saturday, we're in France. Well, we're not actually in France, but uh, two plays in France. Yeah, There's Catalan nice Dragons uh, take on uh, London. Celine Dragons this week as well. Oh, are they? Well, they're in championship, James. Uh, Catalan who? <laughs> it's Catalan's London. Catalan, isn't it? 
Yeah, can't, you, you have London even won two in a row, yeah? Uh, no, I don't think they have. I don't think they have. I'll uh, tell you what, that'd be absolute cat amongst pigeons if London win there. <laughs> Sorry, I think I'm wrong here. No, it is cat on London. Is it cat on London? Yeah. And what, what games are on Sunday? <laughs> I've got my fixtures all, all mixed up here. Salford Wakefield. Salford Wakefield on, on Sunday. Wakefield. Really? At the edge of our stadium? Wakefield. Because Wakefield have been an inconsistent team, haven't they? This yeah, but so have Salford. Yeah. <laughs> well, I was looking, I think Salford, yeah. like, Salford's last three games, they've lost by three, by two and by one, or something like that. Or they've lost by two, two and three in the last three games. I'll go, I'll go with Salford, just because you've gone with Wakefield. Uh, but and then what's the other game? Hulk okay, You've not done Hulk okay. Oh yeah, it's Hulk okay, It's Hulk okay, Air. Hulk okay, Air it? on Sunday at the Cape on Craven Park. Warrington. Oh, it's going to be Warrington, hasn't it? It's going to be interesting though. Tony Smith against his old club Warrington. But he'll, he'll know a couple of the, the Warrington mm. boys, wouldn't he? But I just think Warrington are too strong this year, aren't they? They're a fantastic side to, to watch. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we'll yeah, I'm, 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 I'm Warrington. Um, yeah, we just had a little, little introduction of Steve. We're not a Salford sponsor. Steve, the, the Salford sponsor for Chris Nenu. Uh, <laughs> he's, he's just ran away. Uh, he's ran off now. Yeah, but, but we're wrapped up anyway. Anything on site this week, James, just before we go? Loads, as always. We've got the paper talk, we've got the off the record. Expansionist got, blog with uh, from yeah, Serbia. Yeah, That's from this week. Dave Parkinson doing his expansionist blog from when Lancashire told Serbia. Uh, we've got plenty more content on site. We've got plenty of exclusive interviews. Make sure you check out the Final Hooter podcast with Adrian Jackson and our boy Dave Parkinson. Uh, that's it for Love Rugby League Weekly. We'll catch you again next week.